Hello, everybody. My name is Claudio, one of the co-founders of Metapool with the first liquid staking solution on Neo and Aurora. Our first and foremost, our mission is basically to help uh, proof of stake protocols become more capital efficient and more importantly, decentralized. Of course, one of the main uh, aspects of Metapool is we want to help proof of stake protocols grow in emerging markets. So this is basically, everybody knows how this works, but anyhow, for the audience that doesn't know, so we're basically allowing, when you delegate your NIR to Metapool, we distribute to more than 100 validator nodes on the NIR protocol network, basically allowing it to be more decentralized and more capital efficient when we mint a liquid staking token. So this is the APY that we do right now. It's around 9.1% APY. Plus, if you use it for DeFi, you get the extra yield from those different protocols. So that's basically one of the big things that we're allowing NIR to be more capital efficient. But the big thing here for us is that we're the only liquid staking token that is using custodial services on NIR and Aurora. We support Fireblocks, Credo, and Finoa, which is a custodial service partner for Europe. And now the big thing and what we're announcing today is we're launching liquid staking native on Aurora. So with this, we're also launching our new logo, new design. So basically after 21 months on mainnet, luckily Lucio finally convinced them to change the front end. It took me a while, but it's the 21, 21 months later, here we are, right? But more importantly, here is what we're offering for Aurora token holders. It's a solution for them to get that extra APY for all DeFi applications on Aurora. It took us about four months to build it, but it's now on mainnet and it's live today. You can go and check it out. Also, this is one of the big things we're doing with the NIR Foundation uh, business development team. We're allowing liquid staking tokens from NIR Aurora to be used in fintech applications all around the world. Uh, Dito Banks is based in El Salvador. Rand Network is based under, in Europe and Spain. Cresi is based in Mexico. So basically, collateralization of NIR protocol assets in order for them to get loans on their local currency in the fiat. So really happy about that. That couldn't be possible without the NIR Foundation business development team. So, Robbie, shout out to you, man. Um, our roadmap for 2023, as I said, fintech applications are going to be the way that we build the bridges between Web 2.0 and Web 3. So we're, we're helping do that. The next thing is we're also EVM compatible. So we're launching in Aurora some of our products, which is Meta Yield, Meta Bond Markets, which I'll go into it a little bit. And also we're launching on Dexas and Order Books on Near Native. One of the big things that we're launching today is basically governance version 0.1. We're going to be putting all protocol fees from the liquid staking platform in the hands of the users of our community. All meta governance token holders will receive directly the fees from the protocol itself. So this is a first for any liquid staking solution on any layer one. Basically, representatives from near in Aurora will have a shot at calling the shots for the Metapool DAO. So that DAO is basically live right now, and we're gonna be allowing the community to vote on where we go on May 26th, so more news on that. This is a little bit of how things are gonna be put in forward. It is a step-by-step -step process. Running a DAO is not trivial, but then again, we need to put it forward, right? That This is why we're building a Web3, and this is the vision of Lucio and myself as co-founders when we launch uh, Metapool on Near. And NIR is the platform where you can launch smart contracts that are running fully on top of a DAO. Next thing is building for the community by the community, right? NIR Digital Collective, which is the way that NIR is going to be, become more decentralized. We're going to help fund some of the working groups through our liquid staking platform. More importantly, funding community projects that are launching on top of NIR as well in Aurora. And last but not least, this will be the first step into are the interacting with universal basic income on NIR. And so we're hopefully we're gonna be providing the platform in order to build that on top of NIR. This is a team, we're based out of Argentina, Mexico, Ecuador, Switzerland, and, and Spain. So we're a full on diverse team, so really happy to be here. And thank you very much everybody for the space. Cameron, thank you very much, everybody. I'll be around, so anyhow, thank you, gracias. If anyone has any questions, Claudio is here to answer, and then we're going to lead into the next project, which is Drop. Yeah, Max. Hey, uh, Claudio. So you said your differentiator from other liquid staking protocols, so near, is that you partner with custody providers? Uh, yes. Okay. 
So basically, this is allowing us to interact with, with fintech applications, right? In the case, for example, of Cresci. Oh, sorry about that. I don't know where they are. Sorry, my, my manners. So in the case of Cresci, for example, what we're doing with them is we're leveraging Fireblocks in order for us to, for them to send us near, then we go ahead, stake it on Metapool, and then the APY gets sent over to, to Cresci in order for them to provide the hedge for collateralization of their token. That way they protect themselves and their users based on the fluctuation of the, of the, of the token itself, right? And so that's one of the ways we're leveraging it. For example, for Dito Banks, Dito Banks is based in, Sa in El Salvador. They're using Credo as a, as a custodial platform, which is allowing them to provide the necessary means to comply with the El Salvador government in order for them to, custodi custodi cus to custody assets from, from El Salvador citizens. So that's how we're leveraging, building those bridges between Web 2.0 and Web, Web 3. Max, thanks for the question. How do you prevent against uh, slashing activities on the validators that you choose to delegate to? And how do you protect the user's funds from uh, those sort of activities? Well, that's the great thing right now about Near. There's no slashing. So, so at the moment, yes, thank you very much, Ilya. I don't know if that is forever, right? But eventually, the, how we're approaching slashing is right now we're distributing to around 100 valid, 90, 90 validator nodes on the, on the Near protocol network. What the smart contract does is that it's always, every epoch is checking to see if those validator nodes did not miss that epoch. In the case that they, they missed, they get, we signal to the node operator, hey, you missed this epoch, you got like jello card, right? And then if they miss again, then yes, we have to pump it up because that's also affecting the APY of the whole protocol itself, right? But that's built into. Only thing it's not, it's not implemented because in, in near there's no slashing up to now as we look to bring more institutional capital into the staking world one common concern is that uh, not all institutions can be in fully decentralized staking pools would be curious to hear how you're thinking and handling that so that issue so this is a this is another good thing that the near foundation has done from the get-go right is they done kyc aml on all node operators right now there's the region where that node is, right? For example, with one of their custody, pro oh, sorry, our custody providers, Finoa, they're based out of Berlin, uh, they're, they're a German company. And so they, we only stake on European based node operators, right? If, if it goes through Finoa, right? And so it is a tricky part, right? Because you do have to do KYC ML on the node operators, but that's something that the Near Foundation has already done prior, right? Then it is each legislation, right? For, for Finoa, they have to be based out of the European data centers, right? And so we do have to check for that. We got time for one more question. Hey there. Um, one question I have is when you look at staking derivatives on Ethereum, right there, they hit a lot of product market fit because the staking duration was so long. People, people didn't know when the merge would ship. Near staking and unstaking is not such a heavy operation. So how do you incentivize people that are doing native staking to move to the staking derivative? Like, how do you get that flywheel going? Yeah, well, that's why we're launching. Well, initially what we did is, yes, we provided incentives on DEXs and lending and borrowing platforms, right? Right now, what we're doing is we're going to do it through our, our, our DAO. What's going to happen, we're going to right now initiate meta staking rewards through the staking mechanism. So that means that when you stake your NIR, you will get uh, you will get an extra APY on our, with our governance token, but then the distribution of the protocol fees will only be done to meta token holders, right? And so, and they it, it will be through a voting mechanism. So they will lock up their meta, they will generate voting power, and then they will start to vote where that allocation of protocol fees is going to go to. So that's where we're gonna we're gonna try to build a flywheel in order for, to have the right incentives for the community to go to protocol, but more importantly, for the community to be the one receiving the value creation of the liquid staking platform. So hopefully that'll, that'll pan out. And also, as a user of Metapool, um, I like the liquid asset, and also the fact that you're actively decentralizing is a big you know, path forward. So, and also they de re-delegate to a bunch of other validators in the ecosystem. So you're actually you know, spreading your stake around across many validators instead of just choosing one. So. 
And anything we've said is not financial advice, girls yeah. and boys. So. Definitely not from me. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, thank you very much, everybody. I'll be around here, so thank you for the space. <laughs>